Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Courtside with Christy and Gabe right here on the Her Hoop Stats Podcast Network. I am Christy Winter Scott, joined as always by my guy, Gabe Ibrahim. And Gabe, we are right ahead of the WNBA All Star game, but there are a lot of things to talk about ahead of that, especially. Uh, the games that are going on right now with the Commissioner's Cup, as well as uh, some teams gaining some ground in the WNBA right now. Yeah, it's it's been a wild week. I mean, the one thing that we and our listeners care about the most is that the Indiana Fever are still stuck on five <laughs> wins, baby. Let's go. Come Darn on. It. Oh, I thought I had you at that halftime we're, in that one game. You were sweating uh, some bullets, man. You were like you're a little nervous. The, the Mercury uh, really, really saved my butt there. A yeah, couple they, times. Um, yeah, thank, yeah. thank you to the Mercury and uh, to uh, Tina Charles, who we will talk about for motivating the Phoenix oh. Mercury. Uh, so yeah, now all I need, now all I need, is for Seattle to beat Indiana <laughs> twice and Chicago to win once, and then we're good. I don't know. Come on, Fever. I thought I thought you were going to bring me on home with that six win, that that first Phoenix game of that back to back game with them. I thought they had them and I love Phoenix and this is all I'm fine. Like this oh, isn't yeah. like, go get Phoenix. This is a, between Gabe and myself. Okay. So relax yourselves on that. It's not <laughs> any, you know, we're not picking a team, like whatever. With, this was long standing prior to the season beginning. I said that Indiana could get to six wins before the all-star break. And if they do that, Gabe's got to go to Barry farms down in Southeast DC and knock in three consecutive threes and for every miss i have to do a, a down and back down and back yeah down and back down back for every miss. i gotta start i gotta start running yeah gotta start training. just in case eh? you never know <laughs> but just yeah to catch, so people up. catch people up online. that's the, that's the one thing that uh i know we're all keeping our eye on in terms of on the court um yeah. and there's just you know that we yeah, we're obviously gonna we have to talk about team charles and the all-star yeah. snubs and do the all-star draft Yep. Um, and all that's so exciting and great. And like, I'm, I'm, we're pumped up for it. Uh, that's we do, you know, I, we, we have to get up on the bad news too. Um, sure. because obviously we gotta, we gotta keep Brittany Griner, uh, at the top of our focus. We gotta talk about, um, what's going on with her and making, you know, trying to keep her in the news and make sure that we keep awareness coming to her. Um, today we had a, the start of her trial in yeah. trial in Russia, um, where it, I mean, trials in Russia are not like they are in the U.S. The justice system is very different. Um, yeah. Basically, every trial ends up with a guilty plea, um, but I mean, it ends up with a, a conviction. Um, but the, what the court said today was that she had basically 0. 0.7 grams of of marijuana in little cartridges, and that's complete. That's not even a prison sentence in Russia. Uh, right. the, even according to their own laws that would not rise to the level of imprisonment. Uh, right. So it's become very clear that this is a political situation and we will see um, what happens. There's no news because this was just the first uh, hearing of the trial. So right. we'll be back for the second hearing on July 7th. So in a week or so, so we'll be back mm-hmm. there. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm not an international law expert. I'm not an international, I'm not Russian expert. Uh, the people who are experts say that she might plead guilty um, just to move the wheels along. But this is definitely a political situation, uh, which is what we all thought it was in the first place, but it's becoming extremely clear now. Um, and so hopefully there's a resolution that is coming very quickly between the US government and the Russian government to get uh, Brittany Griner home. I, you know, it's just so terrifying. Mm-hmm. Like, the details notwithstanding, I mean, I, I heard what you said and it's, I mean, the 0.7 grams and you have the people saying, okay, well, she's been playing over there. She knows the rules, right. But that's not within the rules. So we, you know, it's really tough to, to continue to every day, wake up to over 130 days of wrongly detaining one of our own in the WNBA with Brittany Griner. And it's just, I mean, it terrifying just is the word that keeps coming up to me because, you know, when they had those couple of uh, video clips of her coming down the stairs and she's in handcuffs and on one of the freeze frames, you know, uh, someone caught her really looking just, oh, I don't know, just outside of herself. And 
the the way they're saying that her cell is just so small mm -hmm. and you know that she's six nine and it's just I, I it's just unfathomable that she's been there since February and it's unfathomable that you know this process is taking so long to get to the bottom of what is actually going to happen moving forward and whether or not she plays basketball anymore we're not even talking about that we're talking about getting her home safely and for her, hopefully mentally to be giving herself some grace in this situation where she has zero control. I yeah. mean, the whole entire United States right now has zero control of her fate. Yeah. Although it seems that way because she's been there that long and we haven't seen any, you know, resolution on when she will actually be back here. So it, it's, it's very disconcerting. It's very scary. And, and it's just, I don't know, it just, it takes your breath away, you know, especially, you know, we've been worrying about her well-being mm -hmm. and then to see her well-being not being so well no. at all. That to me, it, it's just so sad. It's like, you just hold yourself like here and just pray for her in, in many ways, not just her, her physical well-being, which we all know is at the top of the list, but, you know, mentally. Yeah. You know, how tough is that? I mean, we're talking about Brittany Griner who had to leave the WNBA bubble with her peers because mm -hmm. of the isolated factor there. And now here she is for months at a time now being uh, wrongfully detained in Russia. It's, it's just, um, I don't know. It, it's just disconcerting and, and terrifying and unfathomable. Those are the, the words that keep popping up in my head. And it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Well, it's, it's, it's all of those things. I mean, we've said that before. It's, it, that's the, that's mm -hmm. the hard part about this is like, we, I, we cannot say any, there, there's nothing more that we can really tell no. about the situation. Cause like you said, we have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, right. I think the U S government probably has a good idea of what's going to happen because they they've done these things before. And I'm sure other people who have been around these, what, what essentially is a hostage situation, understand what's going to happen yeah. next more so than us, but we don't. So it's really difficult for us to sit here and say, you know, okay, this is what's going to happen. That's it. It's, it's very terrifying and scary. Yeah. And, and we are it's just deeply concerned about her. Um, the only thing I want to add though, is like, you know, I, I've, I found that there's some people who like want to say, oh, well she did it. And it's like one, first off, I'm pretty sure if you're like, there's a large percentage of the people in this podcast who have had listening to this podcast right now, who have had at least 0.7 grams of marijuana on them. I can guarantee you that. We, it's not something that's super illegal. This is not like she wasn't transporting three pounds like we've seen people, other people have uh, in the public eye. We, we haven't seen, she's not been uh, doing something that's so crazy as, such as to be illegal into getting imprisoned in four months, even by the laws of the country where she's in prison. Right. So I'm sorry, like I, that's my, I, obviously I would love to sit here and say, it's all going to be okay. I don't know. But the one thing I do want to get across is like, Stop trying to blame this. I feel like it's such a it's such a reaction yeah. for people to just say, "Well, you put yourself in that situation." We do that, we yeah. do this with everything, everything, every yeah. every single thing. It's like, "Oh, you put yourself in that situation." Right. Well, first off, no, she she probably right. didn't. She's probably I'm sure whatever she was doing coming into Russia is what she's done coming into Russia every single year she's played in Russia. Mm -hmm. Why has the situation changed? I don't know. Maybe because Russia just like is in a war with the Ukraine and needed some needed some political prisoner. Hey, maybe that's the answer. But regardless, regardless of whatever, whatever is the truth of the situation, I just really want people to stop saying, well, you put yourself in this situation. So you, you know, whatever. It's like, come on, man. Like you, right. you have to understand that this is clearly a sham trial. She's a hostage and the U.S. is dealing with this as a political prisoner situation. That's what it is. And yeah. so I think. I think that response is a, is, a, is a response out of fear because we want to think like, well, we're not going to ever be in that situation. But like Brianna Stewart has said, and everyone who has played in Russia has said, that, that could have been any of us. It could yeah. have been any of us. And it could have been very easy for any, it, it doesn't, if it was, it was not marijuana, it would have been something else, you know? Right. And so they just want, it, it's, it's just terrifying and scary. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been, I've said on this podcast many, many a times, I believe she's going to come home. I hopefully it will be very soon. I right. believe that she will. Um, it'll be through political channels in the U.S. State Department, and that's how it's going to have to be handled. I don't really think this trial matters for much, other than to have a trial because that's how the Russians want to handle us. Right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that, that's the only thing I want to get out there. It's just like, 
don't stop worrying about what she did or, or didn't do. This isn't a freaking murder. This isn't, you know, transporting thousands of pounds of cocaine and then getting caught for drug smuggling. This is very clearly a political hostage situation. So it's scary. Um, we're sending our prayers to BG, to her family, yes. um, to everyone dealing with this case to, to do as good of a job. And we're sending good vibes to them. Um, yeah. But we just have to sit and wait and hope and hope that uh, everything's that she's OK, like you're saying. No, no question. And I mean, Gabe, you're a lawyer. And so yeah. you understand like the laws of each country are, are different. And we understand that. But the fact that you said at the very beginning of your first statement on here today, you said that it was 0.7 grams, which is under the amount that would get someone arrested. In the, I mean, in, in the state of Virginia, pretty red state, that's not even, that's a fine. That's not any, that's not even, you, you don't even go to like court. It's just a wow. fine. And that's wow. in this state. And then also in Russia, pretty much the same situation. Although I don't really think they have their laws written down to that level because mm -hmm. they want to do stuff like this to wow. not only US citizens, but other yeah. citizens, yeah, um, their own citizens. Um, I'm not sure how their laws are written out, but I would, I, I, from people who have studied the situation on Twitter talking about it, it definitely mm -hmm. seems like this is just a normal thing that people would walk away from with a fine. Um, and she's oh. been in jail for four months. So. I mean, it's horrible. And just to see her head, like when she was coming down the steps and she had the handcuffs on and she's shaking her head mm -hmm. like this, like who knows what they're telling her, what they're saying to her, like, mm -hmm. you know, and how distressed she may feel, you know, with, with the verbiage that's coming her way. And, you know, the phone call that was supposed to go to her wife didn't mm -hmm. happen. And that scared me because I was like, okay, where is she? You know, and I started getting nervous about that. And it's just, it's just so much to take on. And, you know, when Phoenix was here in DC, you can tell it's, yeah. it's heavy on their spirits, all of them, the coaches and the players as well. I mean, Don Staley posts about BG every day every day mm -hmm. and, and you know she's pushing for legislation you know to to get her back here like we need something in writing on this side to get her here um and safely so um I, it's just it's unnerving and i know it's heavy on the minds of all the players i know courtney vandersloot played with bg in mm -hmm. russia this past season and left there a day or two before bg left and so, I mean, you have to look at what they're going through as well and how Courtney Vandersloot said she's not going to return to play professionally there um, after being there for years. So, I mean, some players have a lot of big decisions to make, uh, not just in Russia, but just in general, just to, to make sure you're safe. And I've said before, like it's, you know, before Creature Comforts, I was over there and that's scary. You know, that's what my dad said, always have your passport on you because I didn't know the language that well. And I didn't know the culture. You know, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any missteps and uh, the drugs or whatever aside. I just didn't want to get caught out yeah. there and not be able to help myself legally if I had to. And so it's it's scary times when when it comes to that. And, you know, to know that she is just sitting there uh, wrongfully detained and knowing that the U.S. has claimed her to be wrongfully detained. I mean, it, that just... I mean, that just works my nerves. If I'm sitting there knowing that my country is saying I'm wrongfully detained and I'm still sitting over there, I mean, mm -hmm. something has to be done swiftly. Yeah, yeah no, and you, and you hope that it is happening behind the scenes. And, you know, I, I don't want to disparage, like, um, the, the U.S. State Department because I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how they situate. Yeah, we don't, we don't know. But uh, we, I, all we know, when they said wrongfully detained, that opened the floodgates for us yeah. to be able to discuss it. Because initially her family said that they didn't want to discuss right. because they didn't want it to become a political thing where she would be in a hostage type situation. And so when the State Department said it's wrongfully uh, detained situation, that changed the game yeah. um, for, for us and, and what we can, I don't know, what we can figure from what's happening right now. Uh, so, um, you know, Thoughts, vibes, prayers to to Brittany Griner and family. Let's let's move on. Talk about uh, some kind of basketball adjacent stuff. Um, right. <laughs> we're gonna talk about Tina Charles. Uh, oh, lots lots happened. Uh, she left the Phoenix Mercury. I don't know if they left. They agreed to a contract divorce. Was the language um, that was left out there? 
Um, so she leaves the Phoenix Mercury. Then she signs with Seattle Storm for the rest of the season. And she already mm-hmm. played her first game with Seattle Storm. As I mentioned, Phoenix is 2-0 and since uh, Tina Charles left. A uh, lot of discussions to be had around, around this situation. It seems like Tina, um, there was reports that she wasn't happy with the amount of shots she was getting or something. Um, I don't know if that just, I, that doesn't line up with the idea of her going to Seattle. So I don't know if that's like, you know, the reason she left. Uh, certainly it seems like, you know, she didn't want to be on a team that wasn't competing for a tra- championship. And as we just talked about, Brittany Griner is not with the team and the Brittany Griner is what make that, what made that team a championship team last year. And she mm-hmm. wanted to join that team. With Brittany Griner not there, I think she just kind of looked around and said, well, this team's not going to win championship. I need to get to somewhere that has a chance to. Um, that was the decision that she seemingly made. What yeah. are your thoughts? I was shocked mm-hmm. by that whole deal. Um, you know, Tina Charles spent a season here in D.C., had a chance to get to know her, not a thousand percent. No one knows mm-hmm. everyone all the way. But I did have a chance to interact with her. And, and it's shocking that that would be the move that she would make mid-season. Um, and I understand, I mean, even when she came to the mystics, it was the year after they had won the 2019 championship and okay, you're not going to go in the bubble. Like a lot of players chose to opt out because Mm -hmm. of health reasons. And I understand that. So she didn't get to play with Emma Misum in that year. Della Don didn't go in the bubble. So she signed the same kind of way. Like I want to play with a B C D player Mm -hmm. that didn't happen in DC. She stuck to her guns, stuck to her contract, played one year with the Mystics, was leading the league and scoring and doing everything um, for Washington. But I don't know if she wanted that much of a role. Like, okay, so in Phoenix, she was, you said maybe it wasn't that she was getting, you know, the shots that she wanted. She didn't get enough shots in Phoenix, but in DC, she got all the shots. Um, So, but then she wasn't happy with that either. So I think she's looking for a happy medium and win a ring. Um, is that Seattle? It is yet to be seen, but for me, the contract divorce verbiage was shocking too. I mean, the move was shocking. I was like, Whoa, what in the middle of the year, Tina's going, what, what is she doing? Um, and then I was kind of surprised also that she got picked up quickly and not because of her skill. We know who she is. I mean, she's the former WBA MVP, won gold medals. Like, we understand that. But I was surprised, like, the process mid-season, at this juncture of the season, that she could get picked up that fast. Um, and by a team like Seattle, with Ezzy Magbogor really having probably her best season of her career. And now, I mean, are you taking minutes away from her? No. You know, trying to find Tina minutes? Like, No, you're not. Are you though? But are no, you though? Or I'm not. Do you have I'm, to? Well, I don't care. It's like you can't. So that all right. So the whole right. thing with Seattle is like, all right, right, this is all this is all by the time. And let's let's say it for what it is. Say Tina it. quit on the Phoenix Mercury. Yeah. I there's no other I can't wait figure out a way to parse this in a different manner. She okay. straight up quit on the team. There yeah. is a report that she had left the team beforehand, um, before before the contract divorce actually happened. Um, and that's it. The contract of force language is something we use in the WNBA for situations like this. I mean, they didn't waive her. So she didn't have to go through waiver. I actually, did she have to? Right. I actually don't know why it was called necessarily a contract force. That's just a weird verbiage thing. That we have. I think it's the verbiage in the, in the CBA. That's what they said. Like the new oh, yeah. CBA had that as the verbiage for that kind of situation. So I was like, okay, but it was still like, whoa, whoa. What does that all entail? It's a fun word. Um, it's a fun, it's a fun verbiage. It's funny. Um, regardless, though, she straight up quit on the team. Like that, I don't, I, if anyone has any information that could refute the idea that she quit on this team, I would love to see it. Because she, she we, quit on, we would love to see it. Uh, because I don't, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. But I think that going to Seattle thing, that was probably, she had that in the bag at some, at, at some point in the season where she started looking around saying, well, this team can't compete. I mean, you start getting into, you know, talk to Seattle people, see if they want to come. Um, that being said, I don't think they're going to, I, Seattle should treat her as they treated John Tell Lavender. Lavender's, Lavender's a really good player. Another player who got, who got cut from a, a higher paying contract to come to Seattle to mm-hmm. compete for a title. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think she takes over Lavender's minutes and that's kind of what happened in the first game. You have 16 minutes for Tina 
eight minutes for, for John Tell. Obviously, when Mercedes right. Russell gets back, we're going to have to have a longer conversation about who gets yep. minutes. Um, if Mercedes, I, I haven't heard anything about Mercedes Russell's injury. So I, haven't either. Um, I don't know when she's coming back, but if she comes back, then I think, you know, Tina's going to have even less minutes. So, but for me, if I'm yeah. on Seattle, I'm telling, I'm telling Tina, like, you're along for the ride. Oh, I said my thing. If, if I, if you're along for the ride. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're not here to call the shots. You're not here to, to take the big shots. You're, you're going to play the role that you are given. And if you don't do that, then you know what? You can get off another team. There's always like another contract divorce if you want to get out. Because in this game, again, the game that she played against Las Vegas, she comes off the bench for the first time in her career. She plays 16 minutes. And I, frankly, it was not a good 16 minutes. It was, no. she went two for eight from the field on offense. Uh, obviously, plus minus is very noisy. So I want to put everything on plus minus, but she was minus seven in her mm-hmm. 16 minutes and the team won by 10. So to me, I, I was not, as soon as she got into the game as well, the aces attacked her. So yeah. honestly, I could see a situation where Tina Charles is like basically sidelined for the playoffs. Oh. And then that's going to be very interesting to see how she reacts. But if I'm, if I'm Seattle, I'm telling her like, look, you are here to hang out with us. We don't really need you. If you want to, if you don't want to be here, if you want more shots, Hey, Indiana, Indiana's there. Uh, you know, there's team, there's teams at the bottom of the stands. Man, you want to go over there. Stop picking on the fever. Stop picking on the fever. But go ahead. <laughs> but the, yeah, I actually, I don't think the fever. I don't think she would get that many shots in the fever, to be honest, because they're pretty packed before. Yeah. But I just don't. I don't see. I don't see the Seattle changing what they're doing. You cannot take minutes from Ezzy Magrador. You cannot. She was. She's been an All Star caliber player. We'll talk about her when we talk about her snubs now. But yeah. I don't think you can touch anything you're doing for Tina Charles at this point, because frankly, this team really. Th- this is just a luxury for them. Um, yeah. rather than something that they need. Do you know that this kind of situation, and I know not the verbiage of it, but the situation of having a former MVP and starter every game of their career, um, it's really giving Allen Iverson to Denver. Oh, I like that. To Detroit vibes. Like, yeah. And Allen, didn't he make some comments like, what starter, like what all-star uh, do you know that's coming off the bench? And what um, former MVP do you know coming off the bench? Like, I remember that. I don't know what year it was or whatever. I think it was in but Memphis. It, okay. But it, it really is, it's giving AI. And and not that they're the same kind of player or whatever, but, you know, they want to win. Okay. Mm-hmm. They want to win a championship. But it's also to me, like when you look at a, a menu online and they have pictures of the food, like the crab legs are like, they look good. They probably spray them down with water and it's like, they look really good, succulent. You go to the <laughs> restaurant and those things are not the same. Like, so I think Tina Charles, when she came to DC, she wanted to play with Della Don, Misa Man, Clark, like all these players. And, you know, all the, it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. You on the menu, you said, I would like that, please. And then injuries and bubble and all these things happen and it doesn't present like you thought it would. So same deal in Phoenix. I'll BG, Diana, Skyler, I'm going to take that. Uh, let me get that. Boom. And you get presented. Not that. So now you're disgruntled and now you're like, this is not what I ordered. This mm-hmm. is not, you know, it doesn't <laughs> look like. Trying to send it picture. back to the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, send it back to the kitchen there. We're not doing it. Um, but yeah, we're not doing it. But I don't know. It's just, it's giving that. And I understand, yeah. like, from that perspective, for Tina, I get it. But you can't leave in the middle of the year. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, you I'm, shouldn't. <laughs> you can because she did it. You can because she did it. But you you shouldn't do that, man. I'm, like, I'm Mr. Player yeah. Movement on this podcast, as everyone knows. <laughs> uh, and even I'm like, you can't leave. You can't leave in the middle of the seat. Like you signed up for the seat. Yeah. You signed up I and know. it sucks, but you know, yeah. everyone else is all, like yeah. everyone else on that team is, is going through it too. I mean, Sky, you know, Skylar and Diana, they certainly not only are, you know, concerned and afraid for their friend and in Brittany Griner, but they're also like, well, this is not what we wanted to do this year. Like we want it to be better and, but they're going to stick it out and continue playing. Um, and even, and even which we have not talked about Skylar um, calling her current head coach a clown on Twitter. 
I don't know if you saw that, but that, we don't have to get into that one. That's a, that's another can of worms that we can talk about later. Uh, but <laughs> it's it's kind of a mess of Phoenix. I understand wanting to leave, but at the same time, man, like you got you, this is not that long of a season. Okay, I, this right. isn't this isn't like an eight or nine month commitment. This is like five months. I don't know. I get it. I understand that she wants to win a title and that's cool or whatever. I'm right. just, I'm I, as Mr. Player movement. I think everyone has, <laughs> should have the complete freedom to move. You do have that. You, you have that. I, I, I say that all the time, but you respect that. You kind of got to, you got to finish, got to finish the season. <laughs> yeah. You got to go through the year. That's all. That's all I think. I mean, you know, ho- hopefully everyone's happy. I hope everyone's happy. I know, but you have to make sure like when you do things like that, like the Seattle team, like, and I know she played with Sue at UConn. I, I get it. She yeah. has, she knows these people. I get it. And, and the Olympics, she's played with Brianna and all the people. However, if I'm in the locker room and I'm invested in the moment with my current team and what we're trying to do, and then here's someone who rolled out in the middle of the season on another team, and then boom, now they're sitting next to me. I'm like, are you good? Right? Like, and how are you going to tell that person, you know, don't complain about what we're doing. Like you're going to come in and, and, and yep. get in where you fit in and, and you get what you get. You don't get upset. Like this is our squad kind of thing. I mean, what kind of dynamic is that? And then it's not just disruptive for Phoenix. Okay. It's disruptive for Seattle. Oh. Trying to find a, a rhythm for her, even though now they've already had their rotation set for half the season. So now here you go, bringing in somebody who is a very talented, skilled player. And you can't say, okay, go sit over there for a minute. We can go ahead and play this game because we already have this all figured out right now. It's like, a, you know, going back, uh, it's a Friday. So we're going to throw it back to Rubik's Cube. <laughs> We got all four sides or whatever. We all the sides are have the solid color, and now here you come twisting and messing it up, yeah. like you just mix it all up, and now we got to start over again with our rhythm and our routine and our chemistry yeah. as a group. And oh, I, do, not, I, I just don't think I don't think either. you. I don't think you change. That's what I'm saying. She either fits in or she doesn't. And if you don't want to fit in, then you can sit your butt on the bench or you can get another contract divorce. And that's what it is. Like that's what I'm telling. Because like, look. We don't need you. We've won championships here. They have all won. of us. All, all every won. single, well, pretty much every single person here has won a championship. Yeah. Like the leaders of this team have all won championships. We yeah, don't need you. You can come along for the ride, but if you want to stop the ride, then you can get off. Like you don't need to be around. So I don't know. I, I hope, I hope it all works out. Phoenix seems like pumped that Tina Charles is no longer around. They were, they were chanting F, well, not chanting but sophie <laughs> cunningham was at least chanting f tina charles after they beat the yeah people. sophie did that yeah, yeah sophie, sophie did. did that i heard that on i saw that on twitter and i had to turn the volume up and put it all the way up to my ear i was like did she really say that and i think i'd say it i'd say it come on you quit on my team in the middle of the season after every and especially everything that we're going through that you didn't have to go through because you didn't were have around the things that we had to go like i would be i would be on the same way regardless we could leave tina charles I don't think she's going to have that big of an impact on, on the rest of the season. If we'll I had see to what happens, that's just a tough mix, like both ways, like for Phoenix and for Seattle, that's a tough mix, you know, mm-hmm. right in the middle of the year, just to try to recreate the wheel now with chemistry. Mm-hmm. I, as a coach, I would be like, if you're leaving my team in the middle of the season, I'm like, Oh snap. And then if you're joining my team in the middle of the season, as a coach, I'm like, Oh snap. Like yeah. really right now. Anyway, but that's what it is. And we'll see what it looks like in the playoffs. I do want a couple more games of data to talk about it, but like I kind of like the small ball fever. It's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. But we'll we'll get we'll get into that in in a, in a little bit. I do want to move on to All Star because um, yeah. we're going to do our All Star draft in which my team is going to smoke Christie's team. I don't think so. That's what's happening. It's happening. Um, what? But we're also I do want to talk about some snubs because obviously the reserves came out. Um, I, I the, I'm not going to go through all the reserves. We're going to go through them in the draft. But yeah. some big names were left off the list. Mm-hmm. And I want to just go through some of the ones that I have, see if you have any other names that we should put on the snubs list, list and then maybe talk about the one player that we really think should be on there. But we have, I have at least, Elena Deladon, yeah. Alicia Gray, Chelsea Gray, Ezzie Magbagor, Natasha Cloud, Kelsey Mitchell, mm-hmm. and Diana Taurasi. Um, yes. And, and, and 
I, I want to also preface this by saying there's only, what is it? 22 spots, right? There's only 22 spots on the team. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that some players are good, very good players who are playing at an all-star level are not going to make it. And I understand that. We get it. But I kind of have problems with these. So who who was the name on this list that um, really stuck out to you? Or the couple of names on this list that really stuck out to you? Several names, several names. And I'm starting with Natasha Cloud. Uh, yeah. I just really think that she has played at an all-star level. I, I just don't know how she's not on the list. And I know when the coaches are game planning, like if I'm coaching against the Mystics, I am game planning for a player like Natasha Cloud and not just what she's presenting offensively, where she went four or five from three mm-hmm. in her last game. She's a freaking shooter. Like she's a shooter. But what I love about Natasha Cloud is her unselfish play and the way that she surveys the court and makes plays viable for her team. I mean, she's leading the league in assists at, at one tenth of a point away from Vandersloot every other day. So she's seven assists a game. So regardless of if she's shooting lights out, like four or five from three, like she just did, but she's setting up her team to do well. And she has sustained this level, right. Of, Mm -hmm. of operating in her gift of sharing the basketball. And to me, that's the most disappointing one. And there are several that I have, but that one to me is just astounding that you can't have her as an all-star reserve. Ridiculous. And I'm saying it, and I don't care. And I, even if I was from not DC area, I would think the same thing. Right. Um, but my eyes are on her very frequently in practices. She is a, a consummate leader too. Um, and just all about the game and all about the team. And, and, and that's what you want. I mean, that's what we're celebrating, right? We're celebrating all-stars and it's, it's all encompassing when you're an all-star. And that's Natasha Cloud. That's who she is. She's a leader and not just on the court. You see what she does off the court. I mean, she is an all star period. And it's frustrating that she didn't get that respect. And I hate when players pour their hearts out and don't earn the respect that they are, are due. It it doesn't make sense to me. It will never make sense to me. And, um, you know, Elena Deladon too. And I know she's missed some games, but when she's played, she's busted people's foreheads. So let's understand that. Like, she's a problem. You're yeah. game planning for her, too. Stop playing around. And Diane Taurasi, I don't care. Like, well, she's getting older. She's crushing you when she's oh. playing against you. Give them their respect. Those are my top three right there. And then Kelsey Mitchell is, is a close third right there with all the three of them. Because what, what is she doing wrong? What, what, I mean, I know her team isn't successful right now. But oh, she has been consistently efficient. She's been great. Yeah, I think Kel- I think Kelsey Mitchell. Um, well, let me go back to Natasha Cloud because yeah, bring it on back. Uh, you guys can go back and listen to all the podcasts, and you can read everything I've read, and you can see everything. Ah, I love Natasha Cloud. I think she is um, one of the most important pieces to the Mystics. I think she's a big reason why this team was able to win that 2019 championship and be at this level for Same. years. Say her that. development, her leadership, everything that she does for this organization. And we do get to see it more so than everyone else. And I don't yeah. want to discount that because we, we get to hear about it. We get to see it more. We get mm-hmm. to talk to her and, and you know, to, to be around her is really like a gift. And, and I think it's awesome. It really and to is. watch her play is a gift too, mm-hmm. on both ends, on both ends. Because she does so much for this team's defense and for their offense. Well, With all that being said, yeah, I don't think she's an also because... <laughs> I just, all right, but we look at the guards. Let's look at the guards that are on this team. Sue Bird's on there because it's her last year playing and she's super. Okay, that's fine. We're going to, we're going to just forget Sue Bird for a second. Uh, I think Kelsey Plum, Jackie Young, Sabrina Nescu, Skylar Diggins Smith, all the point, Courtney Vandersloot, those point guards on this list are just having better seasons than her, just straight up. And they're on In teams what that, way? In what way? Offensively. I mean, there's not a better offensive player in this game right now than Kelsey Plum. At the guard position, there's not a better player offensively. Courtney Vandersloot's having a heck of a year. And you know what the tiebreaker kind of is for all of this? All the players I just mentioned are on teams that are higher in the standings of the Mystics. And, and, to, and to me, here's the bigger issue, right? Is that when you're, like you mentioned, when you're game planning for the Mystics, you are thinking about Natasha Cloud. But you know who you think about first? Is Elena Deladon. And that to me is the biggest snub here because if Kalia Copper's on your list, 
She has only played 20 minutes more than, uh, than Elena Deladon. And mm-hmm. Elena Deladon is the best player on this team, point blank period. She's one of the best players in the league, point blank period. She yeah. is the player that you are sending doubles and triple teams to. I was talking okay. to some coaches from the Mystics when this came out, and they were like, yeah, for someone who's not who the coaches didn't pick, they sure send a lot of doubles and triple teams her way. Hmm. And so for me, if Elena Deladon's not on the list, then of course Natasha Cloud cannot be on the list because she, if we're going on the hierarchy of players that are important to this team's success, it probably goes Elena Deladon, then Ariel Atkins, then Natasha Cloud. Obviously, it all is fluid and it changes every single game. But that's why I would, in my mind, if I'm looking at this from an outsider's perspective as a coach. Right. So if I'm not putting Elena Deladon, then yeah, of course I'm not putting Natasha Cloud. Do, it is crazy to me that Elena Deladon is not on your list. I don't know how you watch her play and don't put her there. I would say uh, Natasha Cloud's playing at that all-star level. I just right. think this year there's some better choices around. I feel bad for saying that, but I definitely, I mean, like, and I watched a lot of Tasha Cloud. I think she's amazing, but I just think, you know, the other guards are playing better than her. And that goes for Kelsey Mitchell and Diana Taurasi as well. Uh, If it was Diana Taurasi's last year, she probably gets in, but that's, that's my only thing with Natasha Cloud is that she's not, if Elena Delnon's not there, then yeah, of course Natasha Cloud's not there because that those two, I just think it goes together hand in hand. But I also, I mean, like I get why Natasha Cloud's upset. I think it's totally legitimate. I think everything you said was legitimate. I just I'm looking at looking at the stats, trying to be objective and under, and seeing that I think those other point guards are just having a bit of a better first half of the season. Um, you know, that's just that's just where I'm at with it. Uh, I hear you, but I almost pulled in all the air into my lungs out of the room when you said that because I was a surprise. I did not see that coming through. I and I'm not mad at you because obviously you're entitled to your own opinion, and I understand. But I don't know why Elena Deladon's fate should be the criteria for what Natasha Cloud has. Done. Oh, it's not. But if you're not, if you don't consider Elena Deladon's a freaking MVP candidate, I, I don't know how she's not on the list. Like I don't know how she's there. Yeah. So I, I, to me, in my mind, what it must have been is like, well, we just don't care about the Mystics. We don't think they're that good. Maybe that's, that's why I have to be. That's, that's why I'm tying them together. I got you. Okay. But also, okay. but also I think regardless of what Elena Daldon does, I don't think I'd put Natasha Cloud ahead of those players in the reserve list. And it, it hurts me to say it because I really love what she does, but I don't think I put her, put her ahead of them. And I think I would even have her behind uh, Chelsea Gray in terms of point guards for this all-star. Oh boy. Wow. But, but, all right, but if we're going to say, if we're going to say Natasha Cloud's in and we're going to say Elena Daldon's in and we have all these snubs, who are we taking off? We got to take someone off. I mean, what about Sabrina? I think Sabrina's been amazing. Sabrina's been consistently, the, consistently amazing. Yes, this year the, for this season for twenty for twenty twenty two, which is the season we're considering. Yes, yeah, consistently amazing. She has been. She's been. She's been consistently okay. the the straw that stirs the drink for that team. I think she's coming to her own, and she's really. Right. And regardless, too, we it's a different thing where we're considering the starters versus the reserves because the starters were voted. Right, they were voted, and I get it. But and I'm res- just saying, like, what's their record, though? Uh, they are 8 and 11. And what's Washington's record? Washington is 13 and 9. But again, but Sabrina is the, Sabrina is the reason why that team has eight wins in the large part. And I think them getting two All-Stars, I, and Natasha Howard has been a little bit less consistent to me. I get it. I get why she was on there. But I just think, to, to me, it's just like, I think the Mystics should have at least two players, and one of them should be Elena Deladon, and the other should at least be Ariel Atkins before we can even talk about anyone else on this roster because those two have, have driven this team. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think Sabrina Nesky has been better than her. I think Jewel Lloyd, maybe, maybe. There's a really good argument for Jewel Lloyd versus Natasha Cloud. Uh, I think Arike Gumbawale versus Natasha Cloud. That's an interesting decision. I think Kalia Copper, as I alluded to, I'm not sure she's played enough. Those two would be an interesting decision. I think pretty much everyone else, though, is kind of um, just ahead of her this year. Listen, when we're talking about teams that are doing better, 13 is more than eight, you know. But Sabrina's I, playing better than Natasha. I have my degree, and I, it wasn't in math, but I know that. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't know if that's the case. Like, if we're if we're saying carrying a team and being – efficiently consistent where cloud is like you know one or two and assist all season long but she's also shooting 28 percent from won- three but-, but the team is better because she helps the team in other ways 
than getting a bucket. And I understand. Not, so it still it does not lessen her value because she sets the table for people to eat. She sets the table for people to eat and the team has won five more games. That's why I said Sabrina should be the one to take off. When you said who to take off, I'm like, boom, mm -hmm. take off Sabrina. Because when, okay, if we're going NBA, Bradley Beal a couple of years ago was mm -hmm. like one of the top leaders in scoring. He was a full bucket, but the team didn't do well at that halfway point of the season. And he didn't make the all-star team. And people were poo-pooing and, oh, my God, why didn't Bradley Beal get on it? He's get, he's a flat-out bucket. Team wasn't doing well. So now we're talking about, well, Sabrina's doing really well. But her team has five less wins than Washington. And, and Natasha Cloud is setting the table on a consistent basis with assists. So she's a better all-star. When we're talking about the word all, I'm talking A-L-L, -L, everything, not mm -hmm. just your bucket getting ability we're talking about her defensive prowess too because if we throw that in the mix and i love sabrina she is an incredible talent but if we throw that we're looking at both of those players natasha cloud is a flat out dog on defense and you can't tell me she's not okay oh, she so is. she wins it she wins in the assist category she wins on the defensive category she wins on the reading the floor category i don't know can, well she there you go under she's getting a bucket like she did last but she's not but she but that's, that's not true four that's four not true they but she, she was four or five from three for one game for the rest of the season. She's she is so shooting thirty one percent. She's shooting thirty one. That's 31%. not bad. That's, That's not, not bad. good. That's not fifteen or whatever twenty percent. Uh, yeah, because she had that big game. She's twenty eight for eight, eighty nine from three. She hasn't. The shooting's not there, certainly. And and I do I I look I think her that's not numbers, the only thing that's not the I'm only not factor. saying that's like, the only thing. Get me a stop. I I want a player. If I'm coaching, I want you to get me a stop before I want you to get me a bucket. Do I want you to get me a bucket? Absolutely. But if you can't get me a stop too, no, no. I, get, I, me I, a, get me a flat out stop. I just I just think Sabrina's been better. I, I straight up like straight up. I think Sabrina's been better. Um, also, she got voted in, so we can't. It's another thing that it, it, that's the other thing is like she got voted in, so we okay. can't we can't sit here and, and knock it because you know Elena Dela should have been voted in, and she it's should. like we can't take someone off there. Um, no. But I do I just think I think Sabrina's been better straight up. Uh, I don't think I think Natasha's been really great. Um, I think I, I think Kalia Copper shouldn't be on there. Uh, frankly, I don't think and for Elena Deladon, I have to say someone that I want to take off for Elena Deladon. I'm taking off the Erica Hamby. I don't think Hamby's been nearly as impactful as as. Uh, as Elena Dalda in her minutes. It's just not true. And if you're going to, that's the thing. If you're going to put Copper on there, <clears throat> then you don't care about how many games everyone's played. And you don't care how many minutes everyone's played. So right. put on the best, the best player in the world. Like, how is that? that that's that, that's okay. maddening. Yeah. Um, that's frustrating. Yeah. I don't get that. Either. But Joe, but so, and, 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 and uh, who else did I want on here? I think Alicia Gray should be on here. I don't know what more Alicia Gray could do. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't either. She's straight Definitely. up in, She's been better than Enrique Gumbo all this year. Yeah. Straight up. In in across the board, the scoring numbers, as you mentioned, scoring is not everything. And you watch the games, the person who's most responsible for that team's success when they succeed is Alicia Gray. That's true. Opinion. I think that's, that's true. true. No, I mean, she's the X factor for them, and they don't talk about her enough. She's one of the players who you know when she's not on the floor. Like you feel her presence when she's there, and you feel it when she's not. And that's how you gauge who's impactful and who's not. And she has been incredible for Dallas to say the least. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm waving my pom pom for her because I don't understand why she's not getting more love. No. Like another, you know, unheralded, you know, player in the league who is consistent every night and who coaches scout against. You have to, like, you got to know about her. Yeah. Or she's going to kill and, you. Yeah. And the other thing on Natasha too, and this is what I'll say for the coaches. Uh, they're thinking, I think, well, I think if I was a coach, um, and, and I don't even know if the coaches actually fill this out, but if I'm a coach, I'm thinking about the players I have to game plan for pretty much every night. So the players that are in my mind every night, those are mm -hmm. the players I'm probably game planning for. So I'm, that's why Natasha Cloud's defensive abilities may have been overlooked in this situation. Yes. And because if you're, I watch, if you're a coach, you're not really thinking like, well, how do we beat, you know, this player on defense? You're thinking about how we stop this player on offense. I think, right. Is that fair to say? I think that's fair to say, but you also know that Natasha yeah. Cloud is going to sniff out every read. She's yeah. going to sniff out 
the ball screen actions. She's going to be communicative. If she's not in that ball screen action, she is in tune with her teammates and where they need to be on defense. So it's not just about her. So I think she is, she is just a pivotal piece for the mystic success. And, you know, especially on the defensive side when they have jumped up the rankings on that side of the court this year. And it's because of her and it's because of her, her ability to lead. If she's, not, if she's not on all defense this year, um, we're riding. That one, that uh, one's a, all-star, all-star, whatever. I get I get all-star has a bunch of different things. Still bad about that's that. fine, whatever. All defense, absolutely. There's no, yeah. to me, there's no argument Better. that she is not there on, on first team or second team. I mean, I, honestly, I don't see a guard in, in the league, a point guard at the point guard position. I don't think there's a guard. I don't think there's a player better than her on defense. No. Um, in my my humble opinion, no. um, so if she's not on on defense. We riot, but I think for the all star, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, and and I I hope I hope I didn't like you know, well I hope I did upset her. She's great when she's upset. Yeah, but someone well, play this for. Surprised, I was surprised by that from you, but I'm not mad at you. I mean, we're still play cousins and everything, but I was surprised by that. I was surprised. By- <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just, I'm trying, I'm trying to be objective and, and be, and be uh, honest. Let's get into our all-star draft because we we're running, okay. uh, running late on time. All right. Okay. So we, WNBA all-star selection show is tomorrow at 3 PM on ESPN. The way this whole thing is going to work is Asia Wilson, Sue Bird will be team captains for one team. Brianna Stewart and Sylvia Fells will be team captains for the other team. They'll be picking from the starters first, then from the bench. The way we're going to do it is we're drafting everybody. So I have a coin here. Uh, this is my, it's a coin of my buddy. Um, so we're going to flip it and we're okay. going to, we're going to see, we're going to pick from team captains first, then the starters, then the bench, and then the coaches. Oh boy. Yeah. So we're, we're going, we're going through it. We're going all through right. it. I'll remind, I'll remind everyone who's available at all times. Okay, um, good. All right. We can do it. All right. So this is going to be heads. This is my, this is Xander. And then this will be tails. So call okay. it in the air. Me? Am I calling it? You're calling it. Okay. Okay. So wait. Oh, wait tails. No, that did flip, but that flip. Oh, you did. Tails. All right. All right. You're just going to call it tails. All right. Flip it. Uh, not the flip either. How, do, how, do, how, do, how many flips do you to go flip? I don't know how to flip it. Oh, there we go. It flipped. It flipped. You got to do it with your thumb, dude. All right. Flip. Oh, okay. You said tails? Tails. It is heads. Hey, you had some. I didn't do it. I will do it again. Like I'll do it again. All right. Let's do it again. Okay. Do it again. Heads. Heads? Yeah. All right. Chrissy gets a pick first because she rigged the system. All right. Pick your captains. You're doing magic tricks over there, man. Come on now. Okay. Pick your captains. Okay. So you have Asia and Sue or Brianna and Syl. I'm going with Asia. Mm, okay. Yeah. I'm going with the Asia group. Asia and Sue, you said. Yeah. Yes. So they're oh, and, and the other thing. So and, and Brianna. Um, you have a new Apple Watch. I did. I got a new phone today. So I got a new Apple Watch oh, too. Okay. Uh, if T-Mobile has great deals, guys, uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, okay, so I will take Brianna and Sil, and then we're going to do snake. Did I mention that we're going to do snake draft? So one, so it goes oh. first pick, second pick, then the person who has a second pick has a third pick, and the, okay. I'll just I'll, I'll talk. Just it's talk a, to me along the way. Hold my hand and, and drag me down the yellow so, brick road, man. So I, Brianna Stewart and Sylvia Fowles, okay, are the first pick of the starters. We get Gabe's team. Gabe's team. Okay. Um, I, I think I need guards because I have two centers right now. Um, and I'm going with Kelsey Plum. Kelsey Plum has been one of my favorite players to watch this year. I think she's been just electric when she has the ball. I think she can do so much, especially in an all-star game setting. I think she's going to be super fun. And uh, yeah, I'm going with Kelsey Plum. We're going to get, we're going to get the, uh, the guards in here with my bigs. So now you get the next, because I just had to say, yeah, yeah, you get the next two picks. Two. All right. I'm going with uh, Jackie Young. Okay. And just to remind everyone, the, per, the players we have left in the starters are John Cole Jones, Neka Gumake, Candace Parker, and Sabrina Ineski. Candace Parker. Mm. Ah, <laughs> dang. Okay. Thanks for the reminder of the list. I had those. <laughs> I had all the names jumbled and then you or, organized them for me. So that was perfect. Parker. Um, okay. So there's one other guard on this list. And I feel like. I should just take the guard because I, I'm fine with either of the bigs. Although obviously I think I'd rather have John Cole Jones. I'm going to go with Sabrina after defending her in the last segment. 
I'm going with Sabrina uh, to be my kind of we we have two off ball guards now. So um, I mean, well, two players that kind of play off ball, um, but they also play on the ball, and I think it's going to work out really well with Sabrina and Kelsey in my backcourt. So now you got. Oh no, I have another pick. I have another. Pick. Oh, you have another one. Oh, okay. So it didn't matter who I went with. Um, okay, I'm going to go with John Cole Jones. Dang it! Because gonna, she's I the was MVP. Ready to, I was getting ready. To go it's with a all shame. The big guards. It's a shame that John Cole Jones fell to uh, fifth here yeah. among among our uh, picks, but I think that's 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 not a uh, a statement on her value. It's more so a statement oh. on what we needed because of our team builds. Yeah, um, position wise. So I get two now. Well, you get Neka Agumika. You have to. You have to take, okay. Yeah. So it's the reunion of Parker and, and Agumika. Yeah. Be crazy right. if those two are on the same team in real life, right? I mean, you know? I like it. The reunion. All right. 2.0. Uh, I like it. So here's our starters so far for our teams. For, right. for, for Christy, we got Asia Wilson, Sue Bird, Jackie Young, uh, Neka Agumike, and Candace Parker. Ooh, I like it. It's a pretty good team. I like that. I really like my team. I have Kelsey Plum, Sabrina Inescu. Uh, I have John Quill Jones, Brianna Stewart, and Sylvia Fowles. So uh, Brianna Stewart's my three. Yeah, I was <laughs> trying to pull her off. Yeah. So she, Brianna Stewart's my small forward in this situation. Okay, yeah. so now let's move to the bench. You okay. have first pick here, uh, and okay. then I have the next pick. So we're to, to remind everyone who the reserves are, there's a lot of people on this list. Yeah. There's Alyssa Thomas. Brianna Jones, Dierica Hamby, Skylar Diggins Smith, Ariel Atkins, Kalia Copper, Natasha Howard, Ryan Howard, Emma Miesemann, Arike Gumbawale, Courtney Vandersloot, and Jewel Lloyd. So you get the first pick. I get the first pick. I'm I'm gonna go with Skylar Diggins Smith. Skylar Diggins Smith. She was just flat out fierce taking her. Well, she should she should have been a starter. Yeah. She wasn't a starter because uh, people were hating. I know. But just so- Blame. I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't like it either. But uh, right. she goes. She goes to Christie with the seventh overall pick, first pick of the reserves. So now I got two picks here. I'm trying to think of what my team needs. We desperately need a small forward because again, right now Brianna Stewart is my small forward. So if we want to have an actual small forward, we probably should get that now. Um, that being said, who am I? Who am I going with here? Who do I think is the most fun? I. You know what? I'm going, I'm going with Courtney Vandersloot. Okay. I think Courtney is going to fit into everything that we're doing. Um, she doesn't, she makes it pretty easy on everyone. I think she's going to be really fun on all-star game. So I'm going with Courtney Vandersloot. And now you have another one. So I have my guard, I have my point guard situation kind of locked up. I could go with Ryan Howard. That'd be fun. That'd be really fun. But I think I'm going to take someone that you want. Oh no. I've taken a list of Thomas. Dang it. The A-Train. Oh, I want an A-T, man. My one is baby Braun. I knew, I knew. Oh. I was like, you know, who's get, who's Christy get take? Let me take them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. I was trying to sit quietly and wait. I was like, he's not going to take A-T. He's not going to take. Okay, you took her. You got her. You got her. Oh. So that's, uh, all right. Now it's your second reserve pick. Okay. Oh, let's see. We have Sue already. And Chelsea Gray is still a selection that I can go with. Chelsea she Gray's not, not, no, she's not an all-star. She didn't. She was a snubber. Okay. She's a snubber. Yeah. She got snubbed. What a killer. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me see it on the top of my head. On the top of my top of my head. We probably need I mean, we have Wilson down there and, and you know, we have Candace. Down in there. I'm going with Ariel Atkins. Good. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Like that. There's some defense. You know, I was talking about defense and all being important and everything. Yeah. That was a kind of another reason with Alyssa Thomas. Like, if we were playing this as an actual game. Yeah. And I don't, do we, are, are we, what are we doing this year? I don't know the format because I really love the NBA's format. I think it's I like super it. fun, right? Yeah. Every quarter. Right. Every quarter, I wonder if they're going to do... I don't know what they're doing. Oops. I haven't heard anything about the yeah. All-Star Game format, but I would love to see the Elam ending because I think these teams would be really competitive with each other, especially Skylar yeah. Dingen smith I think she's going to try to take off heads. Um, <laughs> That's why I picked her. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, I think she's very mad. Um, yeah. And 
So I, I'm with you there. I'm sorry. I'm moving around. My, I have a graphic for this. So I'm oh, trying, okay, to visu- trying to visualize who you got. Um, so you have, all right, you have two reserves and I have two reserves. Oh no, you go one more time. I have right? one more. Here, yeah, run, down who's, run down who's left really quick. Just, okay. I have ideas, but let me just make sure I don't. So the players them. left are Brianna Jones, Dierica Hamby, uh, Kalia Copper, Natasha Howard, Ryan Howard, Emma Misaman, Arika Gumbawale, and Jewel Lloyd. I'm going with copper. Going with copper? Yep. That'll be fun. Transition yeah. nightmare. Push. Yeah, let's go. Finals MVP. Yeah. I love it. She's ready. She's ready. We're going. All right. Let's go, Kyle. Yeah. I like I like I like I like the way your team's setting up. It looks it's, nice. It's nice. Mm. Got the I got the fighters. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. I got the nails. I got the nails popping team. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. Mm. So I don't know if I need any more bigs. I have a lot of bigs. I'm basically the current Connecticut Sun roster. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, almost the same distribution. I have two of their players. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry to Brianna Jones. I'm not going Brianna Jones. I don't think I'm going to go with a big. I want a guard. Um, I don't, I have buckets at the moment. I kind of want to get someone that can do a little bit of everything. So I'm going, I'm going with Jewel Lloyd. (laughs) Got her her again. (laughs) Got her again. I was going to get that next. Uh, And now I have another, I have another another pick. I do. I could use, I could use a, I mean, like I just said, I don't need bigs, but obviously I'm going to have to take a big at some point. Um, and I'm looking around and don't you do it, Gabe. And you're already going to do, I already know. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to go with, uh, the, the mystics connection or the Maryland connection, but I think I'm going with Emma Mieseman because (laughs) dang it. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. I was going to go into my chair. Now you took all three of the ones I had. Okay. I'll go with Emma Bissaman because I think her passing is amazing. I think she's having a tremendous season. I think she's been awesome. She's been um, one of the biggest reasons why Chicago is where they are at. Uh, probably Chicago didn't deserve four all-stars, but I'm glad Emma made it because she deserves to be one. And I'm glad that she's on my team and she's going to be throwing passes around uh, to the rest of these bigs. And I have a squad. I'm really excited. I love this. That's the squad with me. See, I was going to get, I was going to get Emma mm-hmm. and school and AT, but that's okay. I'm gonna give you those. I'm gonna go with the uh, the quiet. Yeah, right, let me let me let me reset. Let me re- oh, reset. reset us. Okay. Brianna Jones, Dierica Hamby, Natasha Howard, Ryan Howard, and Enrique Gumbawale are left. You get two picks. I get two. Yeah, you get the next two. I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, that seems right. Yes. I'm going with Enrique. Uh, okay. Yeah, because she's a flat out, flat out. Uh, Stone Cold, and then I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Brianna Jones. All right. I'm taking her because she shoots almost sixty percent from the floor, or maybe it's right over sixty. I haven't I looked she, today. I Isn't she, she is. like fifty nine? Is she sixty one? Something, something like that. Something ridiculous. Some yeah. Sylvia Sylvia Fowles doesn't level. Miss. She doesn't miss. So uh, you know, we need stability on high percentage shots. So boom. And then Arike, we need stability on um, low percentage shots that she makes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like hand in the face, step backs. I mean, that's low percentage for most people, but not her. I'm taking Arike. Arike <laughs> Gumbuwale. Okay, so yeah. Arike and, um, and Brianna Jones. And Brianna Jones. Okay, yeah. so that's your 15th pick. Okay, so all right. Uh, how many players do we have here? Let me make sure I didn't mess this up. So we have Hamby, Howard, Ryan, Howard. All right, we have three, and we're good. Okay, we're good. So I have two picks, and you have the last pick. So you're just okay. You get whoever. Yeah, you get. We got first pick of the coaches. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, I need. I could use some shooting, kind of, in a way, especially on my bench. I think I need shooting more than I need another big. So I'm going. I'm gonna go with Ryan Howard first. The rookie, um, 
interesting that we were just both in on on her being an all-star and I think that's yeah. right because she is she's she's totally there and then I'm going with the Erica Hamby as well um okay. because well she's another big she can kind of space the floor and yeah I think she's just I just want I want her a little bit more I want what she brings more than Natasha Howard's I think I don't know but you get Natasha Howard I have Howard I have Natasha Howard I'll take her and that's no slight. She's tough. No. And, you know, she can board and, you know, she can get to the ram. I like it. Um, yeah. And the, I mean, I don't imagine Derrick Hamby's going to stay there that long with her teammate being the, the picker. Um, <laughs> gonna, that's true. Too. Just going to yeah. throw that out there. Just going to throw that out there. That must yeah. have, I must have messed this up at some point. Yeah, I did. Okay. Never mind. We're good. I have a little sheet here where I'm keeping track of everything. <laughs> you get first pick of the coaches. Who's your oh, coach? Oh, boy. Uh, you got James Wade or I'm Becky going, Hammond? I'm going with Becky Hammond. Becky Hammond. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good pick in my opinion. She's going to let it go. She's going to let them, you know, let those threes fly, a little free flowing offense, but they're going to be sticklers on defense and, and Asia, you know, she knows Asia well and she'll set her up. The right. Uh, I will go James Wade, but I want James. I want this very strictly coached. We're only running <laughs> set plays. No flow. This is just it was strictly this is like 1950s Kansas basketball. Um, no, I'm kidding. We're, we're, obviously, don't coaches don't do anything. Do as little oh, as possible. Yeah. Sit on the yeah. sidelines and have some fun. Um, yeah. So yeah. let's let's uh, let's go over who our teams are at the right. at, after this draft. Uh, I got Sabrina, okay. Kelsey Plum, Sylvia Fowles, John Cole Jones, and Brianna Stewart as my starters. Okay. On my reserves, I have Courtney Vandersloot, Alyssa Thomas, yeah, Jewel Lloyd. <laughs> I have Emma Mieseman, Ryan Howard, and Derrica Hamby. All right. That's my team. I like my team. I like your team. Uh, but I love my team. I mean, these teams are just full of all-stars. You know, that's it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> we got Sue Bird and Jackie Young, Asia Wilson, Candace Parker, and Neka Gumake. That is, that is an awesome program. That right there is tough. That's a Good really luck. fun program. Good luck. Good luck on that team, with that team. Yeah. That's a really fun program. All right. Uh, yeah. There we got on your, on your bench, you have uh, Skylar Diggins-Smith, who's been one of the best players in the league this year. Uh, Ariel Atkins, Kalia Copper, uh, Natasha Howard, Brianna Jones, and Arike Agumbawale. I love my team. They're going to cut you deep. <laughs> they, so if we were playing in a real – they're gonna cut you what if we were playing in a real game mm, yeah we i would. wonder i don't know i mean because we have so we're we're attacking super if we're playing a real game sue is in every pick and roll not because she's That's not right, be, though. i'll take That's i'll take right. my she, chance she's gonna have some help isn't she gonna have ariel and enrique and everybody jackie. else rotating over jackie oh, yeah. i think they're all gonna be there but they can't rotate you can't right, rotate down. over on this team who they're you gonna rotate, rotate off of? in this game because Becky Ham is going to say you better rotate or you come in. <laughs> they're going to rotate. <laughs> I'm very. They're going to rotate now. I'm very Not confident in my bench. Although you you definitely have the best player on the bench. Yeah, and, and Skylar Diggins Smith guy. Yeah, it's my girl, man. Yeah, I, that she that's the game changer, right? Because if we were playing in a real game, again, this is not a real game. If we're playing in a real game. <laughs> Skylar's probably at the playing at the end of the game over Sue Bird, and then we have big problems. Yeah, we have really big problems, and you have an act. But on the flip side, listen to this lineup that I could throw out there, and it's really awesome. All right, so I can throw. Let's see who I want here. I mean, I could I have Kelsey Plum, Sabrina, or Jewel Lloyd, whoever you want at the two. Uh, I have Alyssa Thomas at the at the three, but really playing point guard with John Quill Jones and Brianna Stewart. We're going all five out spacing. Oh and yeah, at again downhill. It's good. It'll be nasty. It'll be a nasty team. My girl. Oh, yeah. That's that's a tough cover. Yeah, I guess I guess you throw. I guess you throw Jackie Young on her. Jackie Young's pretty very strong. Just to be disrupt. Yeah, she can disrupt you now. She get up underneath of you. Yeah, you can feel her. Yeah, she can she can uh, mess you up. <laughs> so I I think my team would win. Seven game series of real games. 
I think it would be very close. Is there like some calculation on herhoopstats.com that we can like throw all those players together and like see statistically what would truly happen if those two teams played? We could probably do it in 2K. <sighs> we could probably do it in 2K. We'll Let's see. see. I, I want, I'm going to put, I have this graphic of uh of of our rosters here i'm gonna tweet it i hope uh y'all can can let us know who you think who, who you think who will win this game i who like it so I like it. uh i like my team a lot <laughs> i like my team a lot it's like there's all all stars and apologies to natasha club <laughs> i know i don't like that she's not on there and dt come on man where's diana tarasi at um, uh, that would, come on yeah if we had that's who i really okay. want I'd really love to have a land Eldon coming off my bench, but I mean, coming off the bench, like just ah. I do have Emma Miesemann though, which like you know, as yeah. as we saw with the Mystics, uh, if you don't have a land Eldon, having Emma Miesemann's a, a pretty nice uh, yeah, a consolation prize. Yeah, uh, tool in the toolbox. You want to bring that out? Oh wait, she's got them. She can go. Yeah, so we'll see the actual selections tomorrow, and then the following weekend is All Star. That's gonna and, be fun. We'll be hanging out. I don't know what we're going to do next week. We've been talking about All-Star for like three straight weeks. So I don't know. <laughs> I know. We'll probably talk about actual games. Yeah. Oh, we, can do power, we haven't done power rankings in a very long time. We have to do that. Because it's, you know, I, that's what I said at the beginning. Like, there have been so many teams who have gained some ground here mm-hmm. and picked up some really strong momentum. I mean, LA being one of those teams, I think that has really picked up some momentum. Mm-hmm. Um, Washington let a couple games out west uh, trip them up, like, got right at home against Atlanta. So I and think beat the Aces. And beat the Aces as well, yep. And I think, you know, when you have those wins, you can kind of stockpile confidence along with those victories, especially mm-hmm. those close games where you have to grind it out and, and grit out some wins, um, especially on the defensive end. I think those teams have been able to do that. So I think power mm-hmm. rankings would be really intriguing to do next time. We'll do it next time. We'll Good do job. it next time. Hopefully, let's go Storm. Need a couple <laughs> more wins. Keep me out of Barry Farms, Sue. And We're going Brianna, to Barry Farms, man. Ew, and Jewel and Ezzy. Ezzy, remember, you're an all-star <laughs> snub. Be mad about that, please, for my sake. <laughs> please. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. So that, that I, I I think uh, this is a fun exercise, though. I think we uh, yeah. learned a little something about how we how I value these players because I don't really think I had those. I, I, don't know, I didn't know what I was where I was going with it before I started, but um, <laughs> I had fun. And I think, uh, you know, that's all, that's all I got on the docket. Oh, that's all I have to. And I just wanted to, uh, you know, before we, uh, before they cut the lights off, I see them walking over to the light switch, <laughs> but Gabe, uh, I had to shut the lights off today at, at oh, South right. high school. We had our summer camp. I have my shirt on here. Let me see it. I'll save you one. I can bring you one. Yeah. I would love one. South Lakes girls basketball camp. And, you know, the community is always so gracious and all the parents and, uh, you know, the kids were just very special and sweet. Um, a lot of alumni stopped by this week at South Lakes. Uh, shout out to Evan Benuti, Caitlin Jensen, Aaliyah, McKenzie, uh, Margo. Oh my gosh. And my daughter Bree came by today with Margo. They were teammates. And, you know, it was just really sweet to see. They didn't know that they were going to be there, um, that each other were going to be there. And they saw each other and, you know, it was they ran fast to each other. But in my head, it was like slow motion, like a movie in the airport when you see somebody in a big hug and uh that's what south lakes basketball is all about so um just shout out to to south lakes and all of the little campers and all their little sweet little faces and um you know they said uh usually every day we say girl power on three before we leave and every day we have something new and let them cheer and do something and then one was slay the day on three we did that and it was like awesome and then today I was like, hey, guys, what are we going to say today? <laughs> and Gabe, they said, we love you, Coach Scott, on three. <laughs> and I was just a hot mess express like I am right now. Uh, but <clears throat> super sweet. And, you know. It, it was just great to see. That's why we have the flower on here to grow in the game and grow in life. And, you know, the seeds were planted and I'm um, thoroughly thrilled for uh, the futures of every Seahawk that, that comes along after today. So, yeah, 
had to shut the door and cut the lights out, uh, just like we're doing now here. <laughs> this edition of Courtside with Christy and Gabe. We don't have to go home, but we do have to get up out of here. And we'll bring you more WNBA action next time and some power rankings, I think we said we were going to do. But uh, for Gabe Ibrahim, I'm Christy Winter Scott on Courtside with Christy and Gabe right here on the Her Hoop Stats Podcast Network. Thank you guys so much for listening and make sure you let us know who you think will win between our two all-star teams. We love you, Coach Scott. Oh.